begin by giving these cards a quick mix, just to make sure we start in a totally random position. So in roulette, there are red numbers and there are black numbers. So what would you usually choose, red or black? I like red. Red. Reach in there and just touch any card you like, it doesn't matter which one. Four farts. That's gonna be your bet. So you'll notice that the back is red, but the casino always has an edge. After the wheel has spun, you can see we can change your selection to black. And if I just snap, you notice the entire deck changes black. Unlucky mate, the house always wins. We're gonna use this deck of cards to play a game of roulette. We're gonna warm up the wheel, give these cards a mix, and I'm gonna invite you to place your bet. Please select any card you like. Well, that one there, please. That one there. Have a look, show the camera, don't show me. Replace your bet somewhere in the middle of the deck. The card gets lost, and I'm gonna give these a quick mix, just to make sure I don't know where the card is, we'll leave it to chance. So the bets are placed, we're gonna get the wheel spinning. Have a look inside there. You should see the wheel actually spins. I'm gonna riffle through the cards, and whenever you feel lucky, just call stop. Stop there. Easy I up. break the deck. You'll see the ball has stopped on the number 15. Now there is no 15 in cards telling us the location of your card. Deal 14 cards down and then deal the 15th card. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. What was your bet? Ten of spades. Ten of spades. Let's see how lucky you were. Oh, yes. There you go. Congratulations. Thank you're, you. You always win in this casino. Yeah. Right, we're going to try and experiment to see how lucky you are. Give those a good shuffle. And you can cut the deck any way you like. Just keep half. I'll keep half. So in a second, I want you to recut the deck. Have a look at one card. Burn that card in your mind. Don't forget the card. And then you can then lose it in your, your half. So go ahead and do that. I've just chosen a card. Shuffle. Now we're going to switch packs and I'm going to try and guess what card you chose. Try and guess what card I chose. So I'm going to have a little look through here. Yeah, I reckon you chose that card. And when you're done, take it out, place it face down. So for the first time, what card did you choose? Nine of Diamonds. Nine of Diamonds. Well, I'm always lucky. So there you go. Yes. And I chose the five of clubs. Yes. Okay. Another winner. Very lucky, mate. Very lucky. Play the next game. This one is called split bet. So it's very similar to straight up, but instead of one selection, we're going to use two cards. So it works great for two spectators, but I'm going to do it directly for the camera so you get a point of view view of what's going on. So let's get a couple of bets placed. Cool stop anywhere you like. There. So the first card will deal face up, so you guys can follow along as well. It's the eight of clubs, and call out stop somewhere else for a second card. The second card is the two of clubs. So they've come from different parts of the deck, and ordinarily, I wouldn't see these. I'd show the spectators, and I'd say, is there any similarities between your cards? And they'll say, yes, they're both black, and they are both the same suit. I'd say, in that case, we can do a combination bet. Take the eight first, and I'll lose it somewhere towards the bottom of the deck. And the two will go a little bit higher. So they get lost in separate parts of the deck. Give these a quick mix, we'll warm the wheel up. Bet's been placed, the wheel is now spinning. In a second, I'm gonna riffle through the cards, and whoever's feeling lucky, just call out stop. We'll see where the ball lands. Say stop somewhere there. So if I break the deck, you'll notice the ball has landed on the number 15. This is telling us where your combination bet is. If I count down 15 cards, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, the 15th card, all your cards, you had the 8 and you had the 2. Well, 8 plus 2 should make 10 of clubs, congratulations. So that's a great combination bet. That's a big payout. 
and this is a crooked casino. I'm not allowed to pay out double. I'm gonna take this 10 back in time and I'm gonna split it into your initial bets. Unlucky guys, house always wins. I'm gonna show you a dirty scam. They do that in casinos. I'm gonna represent this with this deck of cards. So I'm gonna run through it and we're gonna select the number that you're gonna bet on, okay? And just so this, tell me stop whenever you feel like. So they say stop. Because we saw this card and this card, we're gonna pick the one that we haven't seen. The one that was right in the middle over here. The eight of clubs. Now, this eight of clubs here would be the, how much you'd bet, for example. It could be $8, 18, 8,000, 80, 800, depends. But, and you'd split, maybe you split everything and put some on the red too. Now, do you think you'd win? The problem with this kind of gambling is the house always win. And if it falls on black, man, you're out of luck. All right, let's do a card cheating demonstration. First off, give those a really good shuffle and I'll explain what a mechanic is. In the card world, a mechanic is someone that fixes games. They use advanced sleight of hand technique to gain an unfair advantage over their opponents. I'll demonstrate using one hand of Texas Hold'em. You're gonna be my partner, so you're gonna get the winning hand. Okay, sounds good to me. How many players should we have at the table? Yeah, should we start with, say, four? Four, so position one, you'll play position two, position three, position four. Let's just imagine this guy has just finished dealing the previous hand. The cards have come to me to shuffle up and deal. So generally at the card table, you'll see players shuffle anywhere between four to seven times. And that's before the cards are cut and the hand is dealt out. So let's see how we get on. So there's the first card, there's the second card. Let's see how your starting hand is. Ace, queen suited, that's not bad. Yes, I'll have a bit of that. See what the flop brings. So we got a 10, we got a king, we got a queen. <laughs> a little bit. It's not bad. Burn one card, we turn. So you've hit two pair, you just one off a straight. Yeah. What do we need for a straight? Just need a jack. Let's have a look. Oh, there you go, what do you know? That's a royal straight flush. There ain't no beating that. All right, so I'm gonna show you something really fun. Now, on a game of roulette, there's a lot of numbers here. Okay, there's a lot of numbers that you can choose. Of course, there's no bets on this one yet, but let's see if we can change this. I'm also gonna prove to you that I'm one of the luckiest guys and I can actually see the outcome in some of these games. Now, why don't I do that all the time? It's because, you know, I don't know I'd be too rich and people are not gonna like it. Anyways, um, we're gonna try something fun. I'm gonna take a prediction first, okay? So I don't want it to see what card I'm gonna take, but yes, I'm gonna take this card, and yeah, and I'm gonna put it in my pocket. Now, which pile do you wanna use? This one or this one? This one, perfect. So this one, we're gonna keep it face up. There's no way that I can cheat. And we're gonna use this one to pick a number for you. So I'm gonna start dealing the cards and you tell me whenever you wanna stop. Stop, perfect. Now we're gonna make take two cards. So you want this card, you wanna take that card. This one, all right. Now, because I said you're gonna take two cards, you can take the one that we already dealt before or the one that we haven't. Which one do you want? The one that we haven't? Perfect. And that goes away. Now this will form a lucky number for you. Let's see what it is. A nine and a six. That is 15, right? So let's count 15 cards over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. The 15 card is the two of spade. Now I told you, I knew 
things ahead of time. Like first, for example, 15. I need that. Because see, magically in the box, there is a bet now. Look. Right on the 15. But before that, I knew that was going to happen too. Because look, in my pocket, I took a card. Didn't I? And of course, that matches your card. It's the mate of it. Inside the box, before I started, I put a little prediction. And that is it's you a spade. But now, I can't repeat this trick. The only reason I don't go to casinos winning this thing is because they find me, I'm gonna get cat red-handed with the ball and a lot of money in my hands and I, I might lose and get beat up and I don't want it to happen. Anyways, this is a super cool prediction trick that you can do with the roulette deck. And actually one of the older scams in the whole gambling scene. It's not dice, not chess. Yes, it involves cards. It's called the three card Monty. But I call it the cool Monty. Why? Because it's a cool Monty. Hmm. I'm gonna use a few cards. Uh, I'm not even gonna use the entire deck of cards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a few. And it, this is usually done with three anyways. One ace, and that ace is going to the side, and you use also a queen. Now it's finding the lady, that's what you have to do. Usually they use two aces, but the third ace is literally just to distract you. Also the queen, it's always known to the guy that's doing the dealing, because the queen is also marked, okay? So if without a, being a trained eye, it's impossible for you to find, but a, professional dealer would always know where that queen is. Can you point the marked card? Here? Of course. It's super easy when I point it out. But see, the house always wins. Which means that not the queen, but all the other cards were marked. And again, my friend, you've been deceived. And friends, that was three friends that made a lot of money in a roulette game. I don't know if you know, but there's lots of ways to get money in a roulette game. You can bet in four numbers at once. You can bet just red and black. So if it falls on a red number or black number, you can win. But the biggest payout is when you win on a single number. Now there's no bets in here yet, as you can see. You're gonna play the part other person doing all the bet, okay? Another key component of this, for the scam to work was a guy named the marker. And the marker is gonna be played by my friend, the ace of spade. Now the marker's job was to tell you which number to bet on. So let's just go, we're gonna spread it. And you place this anywhere you like. So they place it, let's say, over there. Now, because it's super easy to mix up because all the backs, I'm just gonna actually just flip the ace face up so it's a little easier for you to find where it is. Now, the marker also had a different job. Not only had to tell you which number to bet on, but he had to stay on the corner, he's smoking a cigarette because you're allowed to smoke cigarettes back in the days in the set of casino. And we push a button on a remote control to help the dealer, which I'm gonna get to in a second. So first, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna leave the marker here with a secret number for you in a second. I'll introduce you to Joe. Joe is a crooked dealer, okay? Now his job was to switch the ball from the casino, the ball that he's holding right now, to a different ball that they made. So every time the marker pushed the button that was in a cigarette packet that he was using to smoke a cigarette in the corner, the ball would jump from side to side and land on a number 
that they wanted to. But of course, Joe here had to throw the ball and switch the ball, which was a very, very, you know, dangerous thing to do. So let's go and see if they accomplished this. Now the marker told you a number to pick. Let's see what number did they say. Uh, six and a nine. So if you add them up, it would be 15. So he cued you, go right on the 15. Now all Joe had to do was toss the ball, the ball would roll, the marker pushed that button. As soon as he pushed that button, you'd see that Joe had no more ball in his hand. It was already done. It bounced from side to side and landed to the biggest payout right there. And if you can see on the 15th, boom. Now you won a lot of money. Everybody was freaking out. But see, there's a thing that you cannot do in the casinos. You can run the same scam over and over. And before anything happened, before you had to place a bet or before you do anything, now Joe had to get out of sight. So would have the marker. The game would have to be reset somehow. The marker would tell you if anything was happening because he's the marker. And then you have to go to another casino to play because if you win too many times, you're, you're gonna get in trouble. But the hardest part is when Joe had to leave and he forgot to switch the ball. And that's how they lost a lot more money because they couldn't be playing any other casinos. And if that story teaches anything is don't try to cheat. You're gonna get beat up, you might have lost a lot of money. But if you do it, do it well.